All right, let's talk about something going on here in Washington that you may not be aware of. Something that sort of snuck under the noses of a whole lot of people. And if it continues on this path, that something could make it much more difficult for the bad guys to get punished and the good guys to get praised. In fact, it will have the opposite effect. So here's what's going on. Yesterday, the House Subcommittee on Capital Markets and Government Sponsored Enterprises passed through a bill that severely weakens protections for whistleblowers and could now be considered at any time by the House Financial Services Committee. Now, this has the backing and, I should mention, the lobbying dollars of the all powerful U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It's often been pretty friendly to Wall Street interests. And here's what it would do if passed. It would require a whistleblower to first report information about misconduct to his or her employer before going to a regulatory agency. It would also require the agency, most likely the SEC, to notify that employer or entity before taking any enforcement action. It would also legalize retaliation by the company against the whistleblowing employee. And finally, it would remove incentives for the whistleblowers, previously guaranteed by Dodd-Frank, since, you know, often whistleblowers will lose their jobs after reporting the wrongdoing inside companies. And it's kind of funny with a lot of things here in Washington. The title of this bill, it's a little deceptive. It's called the Whistleblower Improvement Act. So there's this. And speaking of whistleblowers, the accused WikiLeaks whistleblower, Bradley Manning, begins his trial next week. As it turns out, President Obama also has used the Espionage Act to charge six people for alleged mishandling of classified information. Now, six people may not sound like a lot, but before Obama, there were only three cases ever like this. To talk more about all of this, I'm joined now by Kathleen McClellan, attorney for the Government Accountability Project. Uh, Kathleen, let's talk first about um, uh, what I just mentioned with President Obama, how already he has charged six people using uh, the Espionage Act, which, by the way, goes back to World War One. Yes, it's a World War One era law that has been used three times, as you said, in history. And Obama has used it with... Um, <laughs> with zealousness to go after so-called leakers who are more often than not whistleblowers. And the problem with that is as soon as you charge someone under the Espionage Act, you rebrand them a spy. And for a whistleblower who's probably not even had a chance to be public before being indicted, that is a very, very dangerous prospect. To be calling whistleblowers spies sends a major chilling effect to all intelligence agencies and all government employees, really. Let's talk about this. I mean, on one hand, you can think of that um, that movie, I think it was called The Insider, um, in which this, this guy, based on a true story, who worked for a tobacco company, uh, told 60 Minutes about what was actually going on, that this company knew these dangerous practices were happening um, with chemicals in cigarettes, but they went forward with it anyways. Uh, that in many ways saved probably lots of people's lives. But when you talk about government leaking, sometimes you get along the lines of, um, you know, classified information, classified because uh, it needs to be for the safety and security of this country. Talk a little bit about that, because I know that's a common argument that's used against these sort of government leakers. Well, that is absolutely the argument that's used, and I think that there is information that should be properly classified. The question is, is whether or not any of these so-called leakers who, like I said, are more often than not whistleblowers, have actually leaked any classified information. And if you take the case of uh, one of GAP's clients, the NSA whistleblower, National Security Agency whistleblower, Thomas Drake, they came out with a thundering indictment about how he would leaked classified information, but then... When you looked more carefully, he wasn't even actually charged with leaking classified information. And more importantly, the government's case completely collapsed because it turned out, in fact, that he had not leaked any classified information or even mishandled any classified information in reality. And so that's obviously what the government need, wants to say because that is the strongest possible case, and that's where the Espionage Act comes into play. But uh, Everybody agrees, all experts, that there's rampant overclassification in the government. We have four million people with security clearances. So whether or not someone's actually leaking legitimately classified information that could actually hurt uh, national security, I think we should be pretty skeptical of that. Uh, let's talk about um, one of the most well-known whistleblowers of our time, uh, Private Manning, Bradley Manning, who is accused of uh, leaking information and that video uh, to the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. He has, uh, his trial begins this Thursday. He's already been in custody for almost two years. I think nine months of that was in solitary confinement. Um, it seems to me that there is going to be uh, no stone left unturned, that the government is going to get Bradley Manning on every count they can, 
as you said, to make an example of him, among other things, to punish him for leaking this, this information. Um, let's compare Bradley Manning to the most famous whistleblower from you know, my parents' generation, Daniel Ellsberg, who wrote the Pentagon Papers. Uh, the government didn't like him, but he was hailed as a hero. Uh, do you think that there's been a big change, that, that society doesn't see Bradley Manning in the same way they see Daniel Ellsberg? Well, you know, I think that there has been a change in the way that the government's rebranded leakers and whistleblowers. Instead of, you know, Daniel Ellsberg was called the most dangerous man in America, but the Obama administration has taken it a step further and actually charged six people, Bradley Manning is one of them, under the Espionage Act and threatened them with life imprisonment. And that, you know, takes things to a whole new level because now whistleblowers, they not only have to worry about losing their careers, losing their livelihood, losing their friends and uh, sometimes their family, they have to worry about losing their freedom. And that is a different level of um, nefarious retaliation that a lot of whistleblowers in the intelligence community are facing. Now, this bill that I talked about, um, the, the Whistleblowers Improvement Act, uh, you know, there's not necessarily a chance that this is going, going to be passed. It, it's not in their favor right now, but it has already made its way out of the first committee, and it's still moving in, in a direction. And as we mentioned, it takes away a whole bunch of protections. Uh, that for years whistleblowers have had. Um, talk a little bit about what this says about the future in this country uh, as it is for, for potential whistleblowers. Well, you know, I think, like you said, the bill doesn't have a very good chance, and that's probably a good thing because it, you know, it is inaptly named the Whistleblower Improvement Act, and it basically guts the very hard-earned and badly needed whistleblower protections in the Dodd-Frank bill of 2010. And these are new incentive programs. They haven't even had a chance to be tested. The rulemaking from the Incentives, agencies, incentives to, for people who work in, in Wall in Street. In Wall Street, in, financial, in finance, to blow the whistle, and it provides a reward, an award program for them if they bring to light uh, waste or fraud or abuse and the agencies then sanction the people who or agencies then sanction the corporations to the tune of at least a million dollars so whistleblowers using this program would be saving the taxpayers millions and millions and maybe even billions of dollars and yet already before the programs are even out of the gate there's uh, a tax and I think you know Deep Throat said, follow the money. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of money involved here, and there's a lot of corporations that stand to lose money if the SEC, is the Securities and Exchange Commission, is actually able to enforce the the laws that they're given the power to enforce. Those corporations, all powerful, as we know, a lot of uh, a lot of money and a lot of power here in Washington to influence. So that's sort of where you see this uh, delicate balance. Kathleen McClellan, attorney for the Government Accountability Project. Thanks so much.